Ever since the Echo Show 10 came out, I've been waiting to see the upgrades to the Echo Show 5 and the Echo Show 8. I wanted to see if Amazon could bring a rotating display to a smaller device and still keep their lower price point. So while we did get an improved Echo Show 8 that maintain the same price point, we didn't end up with a rotating display. What we did get is a 13 megapixel camera, improved stereo speakers, and an improved processor. However, there are some changes you're not going to love. The Amazon Echo Show 8 appears to have lost Amazon Sidewalk, and this might be an indication of Amazon differentiating their product lineup. The other bigger thing, I think, for a lot of people is the loss of the 3.5 millimeter output jack on the back of both that and the new Echo Show 5. That Echo Show 5 comes with a modest improvement to its camera. It's only going up to 2 megapixels, but we did get a new deep sea blue color from Amazon. The other thing that they threw at us was a new kids edition, which really is the same device, just with a kids backing. Now, the reason I might look at a kids edition if I was gonna give one of these things to my kid is that it actually comes with a year of that Kids Plus subscription. Now that Kids Plus subscription is really useful if your kids have one of the new Fire HD tablets that I talked about in our last new smart home products video. As far as I'm concerned, we're kind of getting a new device from Philips Hue when we consider the news that their bridge will be updated or upgraded to work with the new Matter standard that's coming out in late 2021. But that hasn't stopped Philips Hue in marching forward. And in our last video, I talked about that wall switch module that will stop those fights between you and your spouse for who turned off the light switch when you have those smart bulbs in your home. Those should be coming out in North America this summer, but they're already out in lots of areas in Europe. And another product that's following a very similar schedule is the new Outdoor Amaranth. Now this is essentially a wall light that allows you to daisy chain using the Philips Hue low voltage uh, wiring capability here. So you could set up multiple of these along your wall and create quite the effect. Now, because Signify is more based in Europe and more focused on that market than those of us in North America would like to believe, the new Philips Hue appear with a stainless steel finish will only show up in that market. But everyone, or I think most people worldwide, are gonna be pretty excited with the new Philips Hue dimmer switch. Now, the reason I say that is because in conjunction with the new Philips Hue app that we're seeing, this will be the fourth generation of that app or the fourth version, we will see the ability to adjust scenes based on the time of day. So that will be a really interesting dimmer switch that you can operate manually and of course with your favorite assistants. Recently, I put out a review on the Yolink products, and I know a lot of you really appreciated the fact that they were very long range devices, had extremely long battery life, and there was even an option to pair devices together locally. Well, that company actually has a ton of other products coming out, and I couldn't talk about them during the review, but I can talk about a few of them today. Now, they have a brand new outdoor motion sensor, which if you're someone who has a really long driveway or a large property and you wanna get motion sensing capabilities up to a quarter mile away, this is a really great option for you. And you can couple that with their outdoor siren to scare off people, so I think about people who have farms or acreages, it's now coming available for you to have automation out in the middle of nowhere. Now they're also coupling that with a couple of products coming out in June. Now these they call key fobs and there's the key fob and the alarm fob. Now these are push button devices which will have multiple different kinds of presses. What's really interesting to me about that is the fact that their leak sensors, their contact sensors, their motion sensors, and a ton of other devices that I've brought into my home have all ended up with full capabilities for triggering Amazon routines. So if you think about that with buttons, maybe we have another option for push buttons with Amazon's voice assistant. 
Hex Home is a security system I unboxed, set up, and have been using for a few months now. It sets up in literally seconds and is a really easy way to get security for your home. Well, they're launching June 8th and you'll be able to find links below for them and our review of their system. They've come a long ways in a very short time. I had taken on a couple of Alfred smart locks actually just before I moved into this rental place and unfortunately that meant that I couldn't install them and so we never put them into any content on the channel. They were still incredibly high quality devices and I was excited but I had to give them away. So I gave them away but I've been watching Alfred ever since and they have a brand new Mortise lock so that's a little piece for you there if you have a standard desk bolt it's probably not going to work for you but if you can install this thing it has some really interesting features not only will you be able to secure your home with your favorite smart home hub but you'll have your smartphone a keypad code entry and you'll have nfc cards if you'd like them plus the most impressive feature is easily the wireless charging that has shown up on this device which means no battery replacement for your smart lock Zeus has put out new S2 light switches. Now, their lineup, of course, being S2 means they have the latest Z-Wave security, plus they're pretty easy to put in three-way or four-way switch scenarios. Now, in our previous video, I had talked about how Zeus had put out the Zen 32, which is a four-scene button plus a switch, light switch there that would obviously give you a ton of options. But one of their competitors in the market is Inavelli, who put out a new Red Series dimmer switch and a five button switch themselves. I do like that five button switch because it's providing options for both a neutral situation and a non-neutral situation. Plus it's giving you the ability for power monitoring inside your switch. So that's really powerful. And while it's showing out of stock now, shipping for pre-order should go out around October. Now those same folks at Inavelli are always working on other things and this one's a little bit out in the future probably talking around September here, but they are creating what's called the Blue series of their devices, and those are Zigbee versions of these switches that you know and love. Here's an absolutely wild bit of news for those of you SmartThings fans. We all know SmartThings is moving more and more local, and one of the ways they have to do that is to remove many of the custom device handlers and get those advanced features still onto the hub. Well, Inavelli is part of a program called Alpha Phase Lua, which will allow their advanced features to continue to work and allow their devices to be controlled locally. This is fantastic news for SmartThings and Inavelli owners. The second generation of Amazon's Echo Buds are out and they're receiving a lot of great reviews. In fact, I've been reached out to by a number of you just telling me how much you're enjoying this new set of earbuds. And while I haven't really enjoyed all of Wise's recent launches, like their smart lamp that really isn't a smart lamp, I am very interested in the Wise Buds Pro. These are $50 active noise cancellation earbuds that also have Amazon's voice assistant right on board with compatibility for Apple and Google's voice assistants as well. So I think this is a device to look at if you're looking for some earbuds. I haven't been using Apple HomeKit for a while here in my home, but I'm starting to get more and more interested in taking another look. And the way I had intended to do this was to get a number of sensors, but that's always been pretty difficult to do within HomeKit without spending a ton. Now that's why I reached out to Akara and I asked them to send me their new M2 hub, which is coming out here on June 3rd in North America. That new hub features an ethernet connection option, an improved 128 device connection maximum, plus Bluetooth low energy as an option for devices and an IR blaster. But it no longer plugs directly into the wall and it doesn't have a loudspeaker or an LED light, which I liked for security or leak purposes in the past. So you'll need to use the new micro USB port that they put on there and it looks like you'll have to include your own power brick with that hub. But 
this is a great option for those of you wanting to get deeper into Apple HomeKit. Now, because I'm gonna be playing with HomeKit more, I'm pretty excited for the new controller cube that they're putting out because it has direct integration into Apple HomeKit. That was not available on the previous version. You had to do some work to kind of slide it into there, but you get six different control commands with a single cube. The other device that Akara is coming out with here is a tunable new T1 bulb. So all of these things coming together give us some pretty good options for Apple HomeKit. Akara's recent event also unveiled a brand new set of products with the Akara Magic Pads becoming a lineup of different smart panels like their existing S1. But some of the square versions are light switches that will include touch, voice, and even gesture control. Also, there are some brand new P-series sensors that carry with them five years of battery life and a brand new G3 camera that will also have that gesture support as well as pan and tilt capability. Pretty much all of this is coming available later this year, but so far only in China. Speaking of Apple HomeKit, one of the devices I have enjoyed for the most part is my Apple TV 4K and that's because I've been able to pair a number of speakers with it and one of the ones that I was pairing with it was the IKEA Symphonisk. Now, those are not quite as good as full Sono speakers and they don't quite have all of the capabilities that the Sonos speakers do when paired with that Sonos app, but they were working great within Apple HomeKit. Now, the exciting thing here today is that there's a brand new filing with the FCC for some new IKEA Symphonesk speakers. Those speakers are supposed to have the Sonos GUI on them, so we're going to get an interface to control these devices, and I have no idea what that will look like. But we do know that they're supposed to double as wall art. So you take the capability of Sonos speakers, you throw them into an Ikea design team, you turn them into wall art, and my only hope here is that we don't end up with the wall art just being a bunch of pictures of Ikea stores in their traditional blue. The Narwhal T10 has taken a very long time to come out with everything that the pandemic has thrown at us and now semiconductor shortages all over the world. It's just been a tough ride for the Narwhal. Now, I'm expecting one of these to show up, but it is ready for release now. So you can actually go check out that automated mop. I know that all of us love our furry friends, but they must really love them in Australia because Nestle Purina in Australia put out a new smart bowl with an app that will help owners in terms of managing the amount of food for their pet and combining that with their pet's activity levels to make sure that things are just going right for Rover. I think with a lot of these Z-Wave makers you're gonna see new devices come out and sensitive strips have come out with a 700 series guard and drip and the reason I'm saying that we should see more like that is because the 700 700 series Z-Wave chips have been out for a while, the development cycle has been ready, and they can get that S2 security into those devices. So I think we're going to see more, and to be honest, the smart home industry has accelerated suddenly with new products, and that's why just a month ago I put out another video just like this that you should go check out because those products are still brand new and they are really interesting too. So go check that out, guys. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.